Greetings viewers, I am Eric the Car Guy and this is the ETCG1 channel. And here on ETCG1 I start things off with, hey, if it's your birthday, happy birthday. Please enjoy this digital cake. The first one of 2021. Hopefully it's going to be a good year. Anyway, you probably see I have the engine out of the truck and when I last left off, there was too much crankcase pressure and I was aiming to remove this engine and basically find out what was going on. Well, I believe I've done that. I'm going to share that with you now. Here is the engine, cylinder heads removed, and valve train. Uh, the major part of the leak, uh, the oil leak that was coming out of here, was coming out of the bottom lip of the oil pan seal was the issue down there. But after getting the cylinder heads off, I found something, well, not so great. And that's right here. And you can probably see that. You'll see another one here. Mm, come on, focus right there. And there is another one over here. And lastly, here. From this and this, those of you that are really paying attention know what I did wrong. And this is on me. Here's the other thing, I just wanna back up a little bit. A lot of people said, Eric, you got too much crankcase pressure, just throw a catch can on there, or a better PCV system, blah, blah, blah. To me, that wasn't addressing the problem. This is a naturally aspirated engine. It should not have that much crankcase pressure. And I don't quite think that it was my ring gaps that was the issue. Um, we'll get to that in a minute. Anyway, let's talk about what happened here where the valves uh, kiss the pistons on both sides. If you look closely at this, you'll see that everything is symmetrical. Like there's a large valve on the left and a small valve relief on the right. Come over on the other side, the large valve relief is on the right. The small one is on the left. Now let's go look at our cylinder heads. I got some new tools to support cylinder heads. I got these from Summit Racing. If you're wondering why it's all messy up here, is because I soaked all of these on both cylinder heads overnight with solvent. And I did that to see if these intake valves were leaking, because the intake valves are the ones that came into contact there, but you may have already figured it out. So if you look at the arrangement of these valves, you've got exhaust, intake, intake, exhaust, exhaust, intake, intake, exhaust. So in other words, they're nowhere near symmetrical like I installed them in the engine. <laughs> and once again, that's my fault because I forgot to take that into account when I assembled the engine. So some of the cylinders that are in the engine now need to move over to the other side and vice versa in order to correct this problem. So I need to basically line up those valve reliefs so that all of these are in the correct positions. Now I'm very happy to report that none of the intake valves were bent despite coming in contact with the tops of some of the pistons. I guess I got lucky and got away with it. In fact, that's the reason why I soaked the cylinder heads like that overnight with solvent uh, to look for any bent valves. And that's sort of a, a quick, easy technique. Uh, if there is a bent valve and it is leaking, when you fill it up with solvent, that solvent will leak past that bent valve and get down inside an intake runner if it's an intake valve or an exhaust runner if it's an exhaust valve. Now, like I said, none of the intake valves were bent, but I did find a little bit of residue inside one of the exhaust runners. And upon closer inspection, I found this exhaust valve to be bent. In fact, I chucked it up to my drill and spun it here in this little bit of footage and found that it has slight wobble to it. I took a closer look at it. And if you look at this valve stem here, you can kind of see where it had some strange wear on it from where it was contacting the rocker arm. So I'm glad I went back in there, went through all the valves and make sure that, made sure that they were all good because I did find this bent exhaust valve, but I have no idea how this valve got bent. Like I said, it was never in the cylinder head previously and the exhaust valves didn't come in contact with the pistons as far as I could tell. So I haven't got a clue on this, but I'm glad I found it and I'm glad I fixed it. Now let's uh, go look at what I believe was the cause of the excess crankcase pressure. Take a look at cylinder number three. See that scoring? Going down the cylinder wall there. Yeah, you can probably really see it there. Yeah, there you go. That could be it. Um, that I believe was damaged from the last time. Uh, my intention, I have a brand new hone, is to go through after I have all these cylinders out, hone all the cylinders uh, before installing the new piston rings, which I have over here. Here's my new set of piston rings. There's the part number. And these are not file fit. They're just basically drop in. And I'm gonna check these uh, ring gaps before installation. And as long as we're over here, these are the compression numbers. Um, cylinder number three looked just fine, weirdly. It was cylinder six that was down a bit, so. <laughs> anyway, new piston rings, new home cylinders, uh, gasket match all the intakes and all that kind of stuff. And hopefully we'll have a decent running engine when I'm done. 
Additionally, I will also be adding a two inch uh, spacer underneath the throttle body. Anytime you add a spacer underneath a carburetor or a throttle body, you give the, uh, the air a, a chance to straighten out before it goes into the intake. And it's usually worth more horsepower, more than you might think. Uh, so I'm gonna give that a try since I have the hood clearance here on this truck. Aside from that, I certainly have my work cut out for me. Now I don't plan to cover this in detail because technically I'm on vacation. Before the end of this video, I hope to have this truck up and running and well, we'll go down the road and. Hopefully everything's good then and no more excess crankcase pressure. I'm gonna go on record here and say that it was my lack of honing the cylinders during the last rebuild that caused the blow by and excessive crankcase pressure over the ring gaps being too wide. So the 21 thousandths that I'd set the ring gaps up to last time as opposed to the 19 thousandths this time isn't that significant of a difference. Truck runs great now and I think it's more because I went through and did a proper prep on the cylinders so that the rings could seat in better this time than I didn't do last time. So if I'm gonna to point to one thing, that's gonna be it. Just after honing stuff, now I'm gonna clean it up with some soapy water and hopefully I got all those issues addressed. That was one of the worst cylinders there. In addition to honing the cylinders of the block this time, I also went through and ran a tap through every threaded hole in the block to clean out any dirt, debris, RTV, stuff like that. But in the future, I'm gonna be using this guy here, which is a rethread kit. And this, these rethreading kits are designed not to be harmful to the threads, whereas a tap set is designed to actually cut new threads. You can't damage threads with a tap. It's more appropriate to use a rethread kit like this one. I wasn't done there. I decided to take things to the next level this time, and I went through and deburred the block, which any of the casting slag or anything on the outside of the block that might have been left over, I went through, I smoothed that out. Also, all the sharp edges or sharp corners, I went through and rounded those off ever so slightly. Those are referred to as, as stress risers and they can be where cracks can form. And since I had the block out and I was making a bunch of metal bits anyway, I figured, what the heck, why not go through and do as much as I possibly can? So the block got, you know, sort of a dress up. Then after all that, the thing is covered in a bunch of metal bits. I took it outside and I hit it with a pressure washer for a while. <laughs> it was like for a while. I went into every nook and cranny, every coolant passage, oil passage, any place that I could get that water into, I rinsed it all out and tried to get rid of as much of that metal residue as I possibly could. After that, I hit it with some compressed air. Same thing, I went until it was dry, I blew out all the passages and cleaned everything up as best I could. Then when I brought it back in, I washed the cylinders out with soap and water again to make sure that nothing was in those cylinders, no bits of metal or anything were left over. And I continued this process until I could take a paper towel and run it up and down the inside of the cylinder and there was no metal residue or anything on that paper towel when I was done. After that, I went at it with a little bit of touch up paint and touched up some of the areas that I had ground down and then I coated it with some WD-40 so that it would prevent any flash rust that might form. After all that preparation and all that cleaning, I was finally ready to reassemble the bottom end of the engine, which I did. I installed the crankshaft, I installed the rods and the pistons, and by the way, all the pistons ended up in the correct locations with the valve reliefs correctly placed, and just for the heck of it, I decided to check the weight of the piston and rod assemblies before I installed them. I did this to all of them and found out that they all weighed the same, so I wasn't worried about upsetting the balance or anything like that. And also on any of the pistons that where the valve came down and kissed the tops of them. I rounded off any sharp edges that might have been there. It didn't really take too much to do that, but I didn't want sharp edges in the combustion chamber where, well, things could, problems could possibly arise from that. Well, viewers, after a week and a half, maybe almost two weeks of rebuilding this engine for the third time, I believe I have everything right. And I'm going to start it up right now for the first time and I'm gonna share that with you. I have everything set up, the cooling system's ready to be bled. I have my timing light ready to go so that I can set base timing. I have my tablet ready to hook up to the computer so that I can set that base timing and take a look at everything and make sure it's okay. I've looked around for leaks. Let's find out if this thing runs, hopefully better than it ever has. Job one will be to cycle the key, run fuel pressure through the system and make sure that that holds. I've got fuel pressure. I don't smell any fuel. I'm just gonna go for it. Uh. 
Oil pressure is excellent. It's like 70. Sounds great. Smooth. So I got all my wires in the right place. That's good. Wow. My intake vacuum is better than it's ever been. I'm used to 15 inches of vacuum. Now I'm up to 18 inches. So a lot of things have changed. It just sounds better. It sounds smoother. Okay, now it locks timing at 12 degrees and I can set it. So far, everything looks good. Ah, uh, shoot, one of my transmission lines is leaking and that's why I left this open like this. I gotta take care of that. Okay, I have fixed that transmission leak and we are now gonna go out and break these rings in. Truck is smoother. Like, I can feel it smoother. Oh, well, my hope is that it's not gonna blow oil everywhere anymore. That would be great, right? <laughs> Now, I've backed the timing off to 30 degrees total timing from 36 is where I normally put it because I'm going to be pushing the engine pretty hard and I don't want to like bounce off the ceiling of performance while I'm breaking the rings in. I just want to break the rings in, take this thing out for a nice drive, get it nice warmed up, find out where she's at. And mainly the, the game here is to load the rings in both directions. Um, that's what I'm really after. Not so much doing full throttle pulls. Second now. engine speed is what I really want. Oil pressure looks great. Great at 60 PSI. It's just breathing better. I think all that work that I did with all that gasket matching is paying off because it just feels so smooth and it, see that the pants pulls harder. Now, carburetor spacer, I added that to, well, throttle body spacer in my case. But man, I am feeling this truck right now. I mean, it's, it's what I always wanted it to be, finally, after two years. <laughs> it's about time, Eric. Once I'm done with this, I'm going to take it back to the shop, put it up on the lift, look around, see if I see any leaks. If I don't, shipping it! It's smooth. Temperature is 195, 190, 190-ish, somewhere between those two. Oil pressure at idle, warm, is like 32. Needle's doing this a little bit, but nothing I'm too overly concerned about. sleep tonight for the first time in like weeks. Pulls all the way up through. <laughs> 
I feel as though finally, after two years, I have the truck that I had always envisioned from the beginning. And, and it certainly was a long, strange trip to get here, but the engine is running smoother, stronger, and better than it ever has. In fact, I had to go back and do some retuning of it because it was running so much better. Um, I was able to tweak the timing and some of the idle mixtures and things to a, a different place because of the work that I did. Uh, but in addition to uh, fixing the bottom end and the rings and all that stuff. I also went through and I gasket matched the intake manifold, cylinder heads and exhaust manifolds. So there's a smoother transition of air coming into the engine and I added a two inch spacer underneath the throttle body. Now I'd say all this work that I did, seat of the pants, maybe 20, 25 horsepower. The truck does pull way better. And that's not only because of the work that I did on the top end, but also because the bottom end is sealing better. And just to recap as far as what was causing those oil leaks and everything, some of you were confused in thinking that excessive oil pressure was the reason I had those oil leaks. Oil pressure had nothing to do with that. What was happening is compression was leaking past those piston rings and getting down into the crankcase underneath the pistons. And that pressure was building up inside kind of like a balloon and forcing oil to go out anywhere that it could, any place that was weakest. And in my case, it was right on the back of where that oil pan was. So it was leaking there habitually and it was never gonna stop. And for those of you that suggested that I, you know, do a uh, catch can or a different PCV system or something like that, that wouldn't address the problem. I had to just face, face facts and that I had excessive blow by. But let me wrap this up. The main takeaway being that if you're gonna install new piston rings, make sure you hone those cylinders. Meticulous attention to detail is your friend when you're assembling engines. So take your time, measure everything, clean everything, and then clean it again, <laughs> and then assemble it. I'm much happier with the result that I have here than I was in the beginning. But everything that I learned not only helps you, I hope, but also I can take that to the next engine that I build. This is probably the first engine that I've dropped in and I've had zero leaks from it. I've got about 50 miles on this thing now. There are no leaks, no more issues with any of that. As I said, I finally feel like I have the truck that I set out to build in the beginning. Very happy to be here. Now project vehicles are never done. There's still a little few cosmetic things I wanna mess with, but it's so nice to be able to get in, turn the key and not worry about it leaving puddles everywhere. Hopefully I don't have to call you puddles anymore. That's the goal. I hope this information was useful to you. I'll put links in the description to additional information and stuff if you're interested. Uh, also that video about uh, doing the gasket matching stuff that you can find that down in the description along with a link to airatthecarguide.com which is where I ask you to go if you have automotive questions. Thank you so much for watching today. Thank you for sticking with me during this journey. It's time to move on to the next one. Let's work on some other stuff. Thanks again for watching. Be safe, have fun, stay dirty, and I will see you next time.